Welcome back. Hey guys, so I think it's probably no shock to anyone who knows anything about cameras, photography, videography, <laughs> anything like that, that I am certainly no expert on the subject. Um, I mean, look at the material. <laughs> My method is point and shoot and hope for the best. Luckily, I have some lovely people on the internet who will shoot me tips and tricks every now and then and it made me think of a little idea. So last week, if you watched my Cozumel video, you'll know that I have been digging through my old footage and just organizing it and playing around with the stuff I already got and um, making it into fun little projects, etc., etc. So I decided it might be interesting to see what would happen if I sent a raw video clip to somebody who actually <laughs> knows how to edit. So I picked a clip from Jellyfish Lake in Palau. It's about a 20 second long clip. Um, and it was filmed on my GoPro Hero 4. Okay, I'm gonna dig as much of my high school French experience up as I can. <laughs> but I sent this clip to Maxim Cheminade. Uh, did I do okay? And had him critique and give some tips and then edit the video for us and show us his steps through that process. So I'll just let him take on over. Hi, I am Maxim Cheminade and you are on Fully Submerged Cover. A few weeks ago, we were speaking with Olivia about editing techniques and all best editing techniques that we could include in our YouTube video from our channels. And it came across a man that you might have the same question to. You also might have tons of footage from GoPros that you had from past trips or vacations or even from your local diving. So today I'm going to give you five tips in order to get better footage and fast. For this exercise, Olivia already gave me a footage that, uh, that she had about a jellyfish lake, which is really nice. Um, but there's a couple of things that we can see on it. So let's watch that thing together and then we're going to talk about it a little bit later. Uh, on the footage, you can see that it's a little bit stuttery. Um, there is a few things that we can do with it. They are a little bit more advanced than, than just what this tutorial is made for. If you want to, please comment down below and I'm extremely happy to come back to you and explain to you how to actually avoid the stutter effect on, on things like this. We can see one big thing, uh, and this is extremely common with beginner as an uh, underwater photographer or videographer. It's the I follow everything effect. This happened because you are actually trying to follow everything and trying to film everything you can see. And you can see that all of the footage is a little bit everywhere and there is no like one motion. This is gonna be the biggest problem you're gonna encounter with your footage is not having a one straight motion. If you look into documentaries or film, in general, they don't have to scoutic motion. Uh, they have a more peaceful and directed motion, such as pan, a tilt, etc, 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 etc. For us today, the one thing that I'm going to give you as a tip is the four second rule. The four second rules means that if you take your camera and want to point in a direction or a certain movement, you have to do it for four seconds. Example, if I want to film you statically, I'm going to press the button and count for four seconds. One, two, three, four. If I want to make a pan, I'm gonna do it for four seconds. One, two, three, four. And this is gonna help a lot your footage. The more you're gonna move it around and the less it's gonna be effective and, and, and nice to look. But let's say that for today, we put this on the side we are just going to focus more on this footage and how we can make it better. Okay, let's jump into, into Final Cut. So first, what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a new project. Um, I'm going to leave everything by default. I'm going to call it Jellyfish. Uh, fully submerged. Okay, so I have my new project. It's here, it arrived. And here I'm going to put just my video. So for now, I have my video in what we call the timeline, which is 
all of this um, here, all of that place here, and we're gonna make a little some effects. So the first thing that I'm looking at it, and I would like to have better, is that that, that motion which is not really straight. For this, you can see that on my menu here, I have a little thing called stabilization, and one click, it's gonna calculate, and it's done. So here, I should now have a better smooth motion, which is true, but if you look at it, it, it looks weird, right? I mean, it, it looks like everything is is like big and, and things compared to, to, to our original footage. So I might want just to take those dials here and dial them down. So I'm gonna dial them down to 140, 150, something like this. And I'm gonna see with the effect if I'm happy. Um, it's better, but it's still not there. So I'm gonna just take down to zero and then start from zero. So this is the original footage. I would like to have a little bit of translation, a little bit of rotation and a little bit of scale, but I don't want it to be too obvious. The most obvious is when you are gonna uh, put those things and crank them to the maximum. This is not something you want to do. It's gonna look bad. So a little bit more, maybe zero, two, zero, three. Okay, let's go back to our footage. It's calculating again. Up. And it's already a little bit better. It's really better already. We can still see that there's a little bit of motion on rotation. So we are gonna increase the rotation. 205, leave him recalculate, and start again. See, we are almost no motion sick anymore. <laughs> Pretty easy. Uh, you can find a button like this on almost any tool that is Final Cut, um, iMovie, or any others. They, they are really nice for it. Now, one thing that I would like to do is not to maybe not to use the full clip. If I had a succession of clips, I would not use all of them. I would just use the one which is straight in the same motion. And as soon as the motion is done, I would cut the clip to go to another one and use them with music and anything like that. Okay, so now we solved, we have solved our problem for, um, for the smooth motion. So we're gonna look into colors. Colors, um, they look actually really nice and really accurate. I really like those colors, but they miss a little bit of that punch, right? So we're gonna augment a little bit the saturation. So saturation will augment the, the amount of color we have. Okay, looks really nice. We're gonna take in you know, exposure. We're gonna go down in the darkness to augment the contrast and go a little bit higher in the highlight. Um, a, a big thing about camera and Expensive camera are actually recording more light. They, they can record more data between the dark and the light. And in order to kind of fake that effect, if we just put a little bit more dark into, into the dark that we have already, then you're gonna have an image would look like from a, a really better camera. Well, you don't have it, it's just a GoPro. So if you look at it, our effect, it, it's pretty dramatic. You can see it here on that section um, it's it's extremely nice to have something which is a little bit darker like this I mean it, it enhances the contrast and it permits to have way more um, way more way more interest in the image itself I ha I'm lucky enough to get to have final cut and to be able to see um, my scopes and here I can actually see what's happening in the color for uh, an amount of time. What we want to avoid is to have any colors going above 100 or below a zero, if you have that fit that, that tool. So if I go even here, I can even go into saturation and I can either saturate the, the dark a little bit more or desaturate the dark if I want to have a more moody image, something more like a dark, a bit more sad. You see like from this, you can really inflict to your image or to give to your image a personality. But for now, let's 
stay at the basics. Um, so my image is color corrected. It looks pretty nice and pretty even. I'm gonna want to give a look to that image. And for this, I'm gonna use a tool called a lookup table, LUT. You can download LUTs on the internet for free, uh, pay for them. There is tons of resources. Um, I'm just gonna use one of mine. Um, I, I'm actually gonna give that LUT to, to Olivia at the same time. Like this, she can give it to you on a three, use it, enjoy, have fun. It's meant for it. So I'm gonna put my LUT and I'm gonna say LUT, custom LUT, and I'm gonna put the custom LUT here, which is here, and I'm gonna choose underwater max TNO. And see, bam, all of the colors are like everywhere. Uh, it's even a little bit too much, um, as you can imagine. We, we don't wanna leave that in, in that state. It, it's, it's just not gonna work. So we're gonna just reduce the amount of light on it. And like this, we start to have a pretty good image. Now that we have a footage that, that looks uh, really nice color-wise, we're not gonna touch this anymore. I'm gonna add a little bit of motion blur. So you can download sometimes some motion blur uh, plugins. Um, I have one for free that came from um, that came from online, which is like you can download it for free. Uh, just type into Google motion blur plugin for whatever you are using as a software, and you're most likely gonna find one. Uh, this is just gonna help help a little bit. Uh, I don't want to um, to add too much of it. So I'm gonna just add a moderate motion blur here. Okay, so I just added uh, my motion blur, which is um, just a, a filter that I'm gonna put on top of it. It's gonna add a little bit of that motion blur, which is gonna make the image a bit more organic and it's gonna permit to have better feeling on, on what we are actually seeing. So we let the computer calculate and we're good. You have a little bit of motion blur. You can see that it's starting to get less and less stuttery the more we go into the process. Another thing that we could do would be to have here into the video quality to put it in a little bit slower. So in a custom 99% and to do into it here something called an optical flow. And that will actually blend image together and go um, and make the, the computer calculate to have kind of a slow motion. Um, it's a it's a try or an, an error. Um, sometimes it works really nice. Sometimes it doesn't. <laughs> okay, so see now that I actually added the little slow 99% with the optical flow, the stuttery effect is gone. But there, there is no more stutter. It's stutter here. It's pretty nice. So we have a few more tweaks that we can add there to get even more out of our footage. Uh, one thing that help. Anything, anyone that sees something is audio. Believe me if I said that actually, if you add the right audio here, you're gonna make out a better out of your footage. So I actually downloaded a few um, things. One, which is underwater ambient sound, which will permit me to create an underwater ambience directly in the water, like as you would be there. Because on the footage itself, the audio is the audio is not really good, unfortunately. So this is just literally a little bit of ambient noise, and maybe a bit of music, um, just because. Uh, so we have a little bit of music now. Here I have my music. So I have my, a little bit of music. I'm just gonna fade them in a little bit and out a little bit, just that we have. have little bit of the ambience we want. The last tip, if you want to make any footage cinematic or, and you are into that vibe of I want to make my own cinema, is to add a little bit of crop on top and on the bottom. You know you have those black bars uh, that were actually sign of anamorphic and no more, more the, the cinematic part of it. We can add that just with a small crop on top and bottom, uh, let's say 150 pixels here and there. If we look at our footage now, we have something that is really cinematic. 
Let me tell you again what we did today to the footage. We stabilized the footage to have a smooth motion. We color corrected it to have a color balance and added it a look to it called a lot. We also added a little bit of music and a little bit of ambient sound. And we added motion blur and a little bit of a crop to have that cinematic effect. And if you look at it, this is what we had before. And this is what we have now. I hope you really enjoyed it. And if it's the case, please subscribe to Foodie Submerged Cuba. It's always nice and she's really rocking it. So just go for it. It's really nice giving you back to Olivia. Enjoy, have fun, and stay safe. All right, what'd you guys think? Uh, I was pretty, pretty freaking impressed. I hope you guys found this interesting. I hope you found it helpful. I know I personally learned a ton from it. I'm going to leave all his social links down below, as well as some of the resources he's providing for you. So please check him out, give him a follow, subscribe, all the love. Thank you very much for editing that clip for me and um, showing us all some tips and uh, tricks and how you make your work look so beautiful. I really, really appreciate it. And yeah, so that was pretty cool. I'm really excited about it. I hope you enjoyed it as much as I did. Please don't forget to give it a like. You can also hit that subscribe button. I make new videos every week. You can also find me on Instagram at fully submerged scuba. And I will see you guys next week until we dive again. Bye. Oh gosh, <laughs> that I've listened to how to pronounce his name 4,000 times. I really don't want to screw it up. I just... <laughs>